Hello, Abdullahi. Oui, hello. Hi, how are you? Fine, and you, how are you? Good, yeah, everything's fine. Okay. I'm so, fine, me, me also, I'm fine. Excellent. Have you been taking any yes. more classes, any more Colingo lessons? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, hey. This day I uh, took uh, two two lessons. That is my third one, third lesson. Oh, lovely. Yes. Yeah, I I I must have forgotten. Um, sorry for my ignorance. Did, are you working? Do you work? Yes, you yes, I work. <clears throat> yes, I, I work. Forgot. Yeah. Mm. I work. Yeah, mm. excellent. It's uh, it is uh, it is uh, the reason the reason why I want to improve my English because uh, in my uh, office there is a lot of document uh, in English and uh, mm. meeting also sometimes meeting are in uh, English so I have some difficulties to to follow. Mm. People, yes. When uh, the meeting is in English, yes, yes. Mm. Yes, a lot of um, a lot of students and, and learners that come here on Kuringo, <clears throat> you know, they are they want to improve in in English and their pronunciation and all that and understanding, of course, as well because of work. I mean, it's, it's very very common. Yes, yes, mm. Mm, yes, yes. Excellent. Because. Uh, Excellent. Mm. Yeah, and uh, have you been watching the the football lately? Yesterday. Oh yeah, last night. You yeah, said last you're night. Yes. Your Man United supporter. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, what I was uh, no, I was disappointed because they mm. they they end the match by uh, one one. Yeah, it was a draw. Yes, yes, yes. They, but I see, I see your 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 uh, you you told me that you support uh, Arsenal. Yes, yes. Arsenal did mm -hmm. very well. Yeah, the night before. Yes. Two, two nights. Yes, ago. yes. It was the night. Be yes, I know. I see. I see. And they played but, against uh, Napoli, and Napoli was mm -hmm. uh, actually on the top of the Italian Serie A, the Italian league, and they are yes. actually very very strong now. You know. And, um, which, which, which team? Na Napoli. You know Napoli? Ah, Napoli. Yes, yes, I know Napoli. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they have many, many good players yes. now. They bought um, yes. Higu Higuain from Real Madrid, but he didn't play that yeah. that night. But still, they yes, have very, very good yeah. players. Yeah. And no, they are very, form. they are very good. Mm. And that was their yeah, first yeah. loss. Napoli's first loss. Since this season in began, the, they haven't lost. Uh, haven't in lost the any season, matches. Yes, in, since the season began, it is uh, their first loss, uh, mm. I think. But I think the biggest surprise, I think you were going to mention, uh, Man City. Manchester City lost 4 1. Yes, uh, I, I heard it. You was it 4 be or 3 1? Out for, for, for three, 3, I think, 3 weeks, three one, they yeah. say. Yes. Mm. That was bad. So it will be it will be very difficult. Huh? Mm. But I think well, because they, they haven't uh, they haven't they will not have a, a big match. The three weeks ahead. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna have easy opponents, so that yes, should, huh? should be okay. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I mean, even in their group. In their group stage, Bayern mm. Munich is the only one really that's a threat. Yes, so it yes. looks like Bayern's going to finish first, and then most likely Man City will finish second in their group. But, mm. but, but Barca is not in the same group uh, with uh, Bayern. Sorry, who? No, what I say, I say Bayern de Munich is not in the same, the same uh, group with. Uh, with Barca? Huh? No, 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 no. Think, Bar huh? Barca is a difference. Mm. No, that, that would be that would be hell. Imagine 
three huge, uh, you know, strong teams that would be really. I think the most difficult or the hardest group, or they used to call it, uh, they used to say, the group of death, is Arsenal's group. Because it, there yes. you have, uh, you know, Napoli Italian <clears throat> favorites, Arsenal. Yes. In, uh, the English Premier League is now top of the league, top of the table. And Dortmund from Germany. I mean, Dortmund was very, Dortmund very good. Dortmund from and Germany, good yes, yes. Now. Very, very good, yes. Because last uh, season they were at uh, Intel's uh, final. Absolutely, with, uh, yes. Bayern. Can you imagine that? All the way. Mm. Two German sides in the in the yes. Champions League final. That was something. And they did. The, the, Dortmund beat yes. uh, Real Madrid, and then Bayern Munich beat Barcelona. Is that right? Like yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Last uh, last year. Yes. 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 I I, I remember. Yes, that was. So Dortmund is a very uh, team. Absolutely. I think it is absolutely. very. Yes. Absolutely. They're, they're, absolutely. they're really good now, and this is why it's called the group of death. And who was the other team? Let me just think. Uh, remember, there's Dortmund, Napoli, Arsenal, and Marseille. Marseille from France. Now Marseille. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the Mar Marseille is uh, uh, weakest, but uh, I think mm -hmm. in my view, Marseille is the weakest, uh, weakest e e team. Yeah, they're the weakest team in, in, in that group, but still, then don't un they, you can't underestimate yeah. them. Yeah, they're still pretty powerful and strong, uh, and they can do, um, they can have an impact. But anyways, all the other groups, I think they're the it's usually you might have two uh, two strong teams or clubs, and then the other two are pretty weak. And um, yeah. So, but anyways, um, okay. <laughs> Murad joined us. Hello, Murad. Welcome back. Hello. Good morning. Oh, is it morning or evening? Evening. Yeah, it's 8 p.m. Here. Okay. Good evening. Yes, and it's uh, I think afternoon where you are. Yes, it's afternoon. Excellent. And in, in Congo right now, it's evening as well, right? Abdullahi, what's the time where you are? Abdullahi, can you hear me? Maybe he's gone off quickly. Maybe you. Mm. Yeah, I was just talking to you. Uh, we, we just had a conversation about uh, the, the Champions League and uh, just before you joined. Yeah, hopefully he'll return. So how you been? How's everything, Murat? <clears throat> Everything's been normal. Normal? Yes. No. Oh, there you go. Excellent. I think you had internet uh, problems. Um, yeah, so nothing major that happened since, no, since no. Uh, no. I last seen you, I spoken to you. Nothing mm. special. Nothing special. Uh, so, I don't know, I think I'll start the class. Hopefully, uh, Abdullahi can rejoin and join again, join the lesson. Uh, okay, as you know, it's sports and hobbies, that's our topic. So um, we'll talk about golf, not change. You know, usually we'll talk about football, or basketball, or, you know, the uh, uh, Olympics and athletics. So now golf, it's quite interesting. Uh, so who do you like more, Tiger Woods or Cristiano Ronaldo, and why? I presume you know both of them, yeah, Murat? <laughs> To be honest, I am indifferent to them. So you, you, you don't like either one of them? <laughs> I don't I mean, not... <laughs> like them and I don't dislike them. So you're very neutral. I think yeah. this question is probably uh, would be better suited for a female audience, right? Or me, yes. maybe to, to, to males too. They're really? also fanatic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fanatics, yeah, especially who love, who love football, and I'm sure there's yeah. a lot of them that love Cristiano Ronaldo. I used to love football many years ago, 
and I used to watch the Champions League. Mm-hmm. And what One happened? of my favorite players were Zinedine Zidane. Ah, yes. Zidane. Roberto Carlos. Ah, well, those were the times. Do you remember yes. that fascinating goal that, that Carlos scored at the World Cup? It was a free kick. Do you I remember? think I remember. It was, it was a free kick and he kicked the ball with the outside of his foot, his left foot, and the ball went around the wall and in the bottom yeah. corner of the, It's uh, an amazing goal. No one has ever scored a goal like that and I don't think anyone ever will. It was historical. Um, uh, unbelievable goal because he kicked it with the outside of his foot and he, he, the ball traveled with such uh, speed and power. And the, the bend and the curve that it had usually happens when you kick it with, uh, you know, with the inside of your yeah. foot or the, the front of it, you know, <clears throat> rather the top of it. So yeah, um, so if you had to, I don't know, do some sort of comparison between Tiger Woods and let's say Ronaldo, what would you, how would you compare them? Did you say Cristiano Ronaldo? E yeah, yes, and Cristiano. And Tiger Woods. I know they play different sports, but let's say just the. Uh, What's his name know. again? Can you write down his name? Oh, Tiger Woods. You know Tiger Woods? No, never heard of him. Are you serious? Yes. Is he's he a player? A, he's, a, he's a golfer. He plays golf. Oh. I'm sure you do I know. He was a, play, a soccer player. No, no, no. This is he's a he's a golfer, and uh, in the last two decades, he's been dominating the sport of golf. Interesting. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah. So he goes to show how how popular golf is compared to. Um, I do you know I like golf more than soccer. No way. And you don't know Tiger Woods. I don't know him. Personally, I prefer golf. Mm. Hello. Okay. <laughs> My little son is coming to say hi. hi. Um, yeah. So yeah, basically, Tiger Woods. He, you know, I mean, I don't know him personally either, but he, he's a um, professional golfer, and he's been actually one of, one of the best golfers. Some say ever. Some say, I mean, in the modern times, he's the best one, definitely. Um, so you can't really do a comparison. Let's say Roberto Carlos and Cristiano Ronaldo. How would you compare them? I think Cristiano Ronaldo has had more fame, or much fame, yeah. compared to Roberto Carlos. Mm -hmm. So he's been more famous yes. than, than Carlos, yes? I agree with that. <laughs> um, what else could you say? I think Roberto Carlos, he played until recently. He played in Turkey, actually. Yeah, he played for one of the Turkish clubs. I don't know if he's still there. He may have left uh, to Brazil. I like he's still playing. Who knows? But yeah. Yeah, who knows? So yeah, that's one comparison. So Cristiano is more famous, definitely. Taller. Um, excellent. Physical comparative here we have. Yeah, he's taller than uh, Roberto. And he is usually haired. You mean he's hairy? He's got hair. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, so it's, it's the so other he is. Yeah. And Roberto usually had a bald head, didn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And uh, they both speak Portuguese. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's something they have in common, then, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But there is some differences. Yeah, but they might not like each other necessarily, yeah? Because yeah. uh, I don't think Brazilians and Portuguese um, are the biggest friend, uh, you know, friends. <clears throat> okay. 
Um, okay, all right, then let's keep moving. Um, so basically, we're doing comparatives and superlatives. This is the skill, the grammar skill. And um, something which is very important, especially in the American pronunciation uh, of English, um, with the comparative, right, is the, the vowels followed by the letter R. OK? And now, there are about eight different ways to pronounce a vowel before an R. OK, I'm going to give you all eight of them. And let's see if you can pronounce them all correctly. All right? Yeah. You, see, you seem to have a really good uh, American accent already. You've established one. So let's see I if you personally can like all the accents that exist. Yeah. Sometimes I prefer the British because it's it's very cool. Mm -hmm. You think it's cool? Um yeah, I mean usually other people think American is cooler than the other comparative. It's cooler than the actual British. I British think. is a, some people think it's boring, it's it's too formal, you know, it sounds too uh, maybe not arrogant, but just a bit cocky, you know. But it doesn't American have to be. Yeah. Seems to be slower than the British. Oh, when right. It comes to the pronunciation. Mm. Yeah, you can say that, but I think there's uh, in both sides you can you can you can be slower, at, you know, in different cases. Uh, but anyways, let's see if we can pronounce this. Uh, these eight words. I'll put it in the chat there. <coughs> Do you I will the try the one? British. I will try the British. Okay, that's so. a challenge. I'd love to hear. Per, par, nice. peer, yeah. pair, poor, pyre, power, pure. Okay, that's good. You started off British, but then you <laughs> you went to American or some sort of between. <laughs> But it's good, you pronounced them all correctly. Excellent. Uh, but actually, we're not going to focus on all of these. Uh, we're only going to focus on the first one and the fourth one. So, per and pair. Right? Yeah. Um, the other ones are all fine, you've pronounced them perfectly. I have no, no corrections there. Uh, basically, now, out of number one and, and four, which one of these two do you think we have to use when using a comparative? You know, when we're adding ER at the end. So which one does it sound like? Does it sound like one or does it sound like four? I don't understand your question. Do you mean okay. the word we, we, we use? Um, for example, let's say... Okay, see this <clears throat> this word here, big. If you make that into a comparative, you will type it this way. Oh yes, right? I. Uh, you understand? So the first one. The yeah. First so one. the way that the second one is pronounced does it sound like word number one or word number four? You know, out of those eight. Word number one. Okay, can you pronounce both of them, please? Bigger, bigger. Mm -hmm. It's like this. Yes, yes, definitely. Yep. So it's per bigger, yeah. Yeah. The fourth or the number four on the list here is pair. So some learners might confuse. You know, they might say bigger or they might have some strange pronunciation, right? But we have to focus on that first one. So, er, bigger, especially in the American pronunciation, because, yeah. you know, this is an American school or an American company, Klingo, so they're focusing more on the American pronunciation. So I'm going to try and do both, give you a bit of both, a bit of British or Australian mixture, as well as the American. I'm not perfect in, in American pronunciation, but I think I can... Um, a pass. So, 
let's have a look. What else do we have? Let me give you some more words. So, how do you pronounce that one? Stronger. Like this. <laughs> like <Okay>. the British. <laughs> stronger. 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 Yeah, stronger. Stronger. You know, I, honestly, I prefer speaking like that. You know, if I had a choice, if I had to choose, because actually, I mean, I'm, I'm a native English speaker, but English is my third language, believe it or not. You know, when I was growing up, I spent most of my years in Australia, but yeah. since having spent the first eight years of my life in Bosnia, and then f almost five years in Germany, so, you know, Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, was, or Yugoslav was my first language, then it was German, and I did French even at school in Germany, and I learned English at the same time. So when I went to Australia, that's where I developed my English the most. So anyways, yeah, I prefer to speak this way, the way that I'm speaking, you know, more of a, you know, British, Australian sort of thing rather than American. Uh, so I don't know, some teachers might think differently. So stronger, stronger would be, you know, with the strong R and stronger, more the other style, you know, um, yeah. the British. And then we have... Uh, okay, this word here. Let's see if we can pronounce this one. I think you, you know it. You're pretty good at this. Beer. Again? It sounds like beer. Beer. Yeah, that's better. Beer. beer. Don't, don't confuse it with... Um, I, th I thought beer. I heard you say beer. Beer is the beer that... The alcohol, you know? <clears throat> here? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you yes. know, it's spelled with double E. Here's bear. In American, you would say bear. And the bear. vowel of, of the beer is very... is longer. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. It's a different type, yeah. So here it's bear or bay? Bay. Bay is bear. like in British. Uh, and the other one... Okay, what about this? Sir. <laughs> mm, yes, yeah, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Say, sir, in American, they are. Yeah, sir. I prefer, it's easier for me. I think it's easier for learners as well <clears throat> to pronounce yeah. sir rather than sir. So now I'm going to actually tell you the, um, the three basic instructions of how to pronounce it in, a, in the American way and what, what to... Uh, physically do you know with your with your mouth with your lips and your tongue and also so as you can tell your your lips must round so you have to perk your lips so sir right your lips make a, an oval shape that's first secondly uh, your tongue is pushed backwards against your molars you know your molar teeth at the back yeah mm -hmm. so sir you notice the side of your tongue is gone back. And then the third bit is where your tongue sort of uh, curls, the tip of it curls. Mm -hmm. You understand? And usually up, so sir, or it can even curl down, as long as it's not touching the roof or it's not touching your teeth. So it's sort of suspended. The middle of your tongue is suspended and it's curled up a little bit where the side and the back of your tongue is touching your teeth at the back. So those are the three main things. So for those who are watching in the lobby, those two viewers, and yourself, if you want to perfect it, this is the, the three main things you need to keep in mind. And then just practice. Sir, bigger, stronger, and so on. Her. Um, okay, let me give you a little sentence and just read it out for me, please. Okay. British? <laughs> both. Give me both. Okay. My cup is bigger than yours. Ah, oh, nice. I like the yours. And now American? My cup is bigger than yours. Ah, perfect. Very, very well. Your pronunciation is very good, I have to say. Um, now, here's another one, slightly more challenging. Jill's hair is 
longer than Jane's. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, in this in this case, we have to pronounce the sound R, even in British. In yeah, wait. Hair. In the word oh. hair. Hair is longer. Okay, why do you, why do you say that? Are you asking or...? Because it's between. No, I'm mm. telling you because it's between two vowels. Mm. Hair is longer than Jane's. So Jill's hair is... Yeah, especially if you want to join it with the... Um, yeah. Is absolutely. Yeah, good. We picked it up. So Jill's hair is longer than Jane's. Hair is... Hair is... Hair is Jill's yeah. hair is... Mm, yeah, maybe some British might not necessarily pronounce the R because they might just say Jill's hair is longer than Jane's. When there is no, have you heard of the word li liaison? Yes. When you liaison. link two, mm. when you when you link two words, when you combine two words. Yep. Hair yeah, is. Like... Mm. Yeah, the liaison. You are basically linking them. And I wanted to ask you, in British English, some people do not pronounce the letter T at all. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know if it's common or in just some regions. That's yeah. In, in certain parts uh, of yeah. England, yeah, there are various dialects that they have. And uh, there's many dialects that they have there. You know, from Liverpool, you know, the Scouse, Scouse accent, then uh, Scouser. Uh, then you have the uh, Geordie, Geordie accent from the north, Newcastle. Then you have the typical Londoners, uh, Londoners accent. And what else is there? There's a, a, a Brummy, Brummy accent, which is from Birmingham. Yeah. So there are many, they have differences. There are some which are totally like, whoa, that's like, poof. Then you have the Welsh, <laughs> Welsh English yeah. accent. So there's quite a fair bit of, you know, mixtures there. And and some of them, um, they, they, they don't pronounce the T. I believe it's the certain street, street talk, you know. The yeah. T is, where have you heard this? In a movie or, I'm sure it wouldn't have been on news. <laughs> No, I, I studied. Oh, you studied, I studied it, yeah. This many years ago. Yeah, you're right in saying that, absolutely. <clears throat> I don't understand some students. When they heard this, they started imitating. Oh, no. <laughs> and I think it's not correct. It's not no, proper no. English. Now, they should try to learn the actual academic English rather than picking up any colloquial colloquial or yeah. dialects. You it's know? also known as RP. Yeah. Receive pronunciation. Mm. Well done. Yes. Yeah, you studied a fair bit, I can see. So this is all pretty uh, straightforward and easy for you, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of these grammar uh, I skills. think it's good to, to review. But it's good to review and to remind remind, yeah. uh, remind yourself. We should never despise something, <laughs> even if it seems to be yes. easier. Yes, because you practice. You can practice more, and yeah. also you might have missed something when you were learning or being educated in the past, and then you might always you know, add something to your caliber. Um, yeah. So let, let me quickly run through the grammar of these comparatives and, and, and superlatives, and uh, I'll screen share this with you and the other students. So, <clears throat> right, so we can use comparatives to compare one thing to just one other. So you're comparing two things, basically. And uh, you form a comparative from an adjective. So it, firstly, it's an adjective. So big will become bigger. Cheap becomes cheaper, loud, louder, hot, hotter. Yeah. And yeah. in some cases, yeah, you have to make the double T or the double G and so on. 
And there are special uh, irregular cases as well. So good will become better, bad becomes worse. So the whole word changes. So there are certain groups, right? So adjectives ending in Y, the ending is replaced, or the Y is replaced with an I, and you add ER. So pretty becomes prettier, dirty, dirtier, silly, sillier. And, uh, uh, you know, in, in American, you'll be sillier. You have that strong R. <coughs> Um, and so on. So there's another one. We have um, two or more syllable adjectives, not ending in Y. You have to add more, right? So yeah. More useful. You know that. So you can't say uh, usefully. Uh, you say more useful or more pleasant, uh, more interesting, more complicated. Yeah. So. The, the word stays the same, but you just add more in front of it. And also, when making the comparison, uh, add then, after the comparative, when you mention both items being compared. So our new car is bigger than our last car. Or this software is more useful than the one made by its competitor. This book is more interesting than what I thought it would be. Okay, so this is where then is used. I can hear birds in the background. It's, is it, are, they, are those your birds? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's nice. How many birds do you have? Well, in fact, they are not mine. Uh, they are my. Are they outside? My mother-in-law. My mother-in-law. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Oh, that's not very pleasant. Is it annoying? Um, okay. No, 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 it's, it's very nice. Maybe I should yeah. mute myself while you're explaining. Uh, no, that's okay. No, oh, sometimes there is some sort of disturbance uh, comes and goes. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's, it's not, not too bad. Okay. I mean, if you want, if you want, you can. But you might get annoyed by always having to click mute on, mute off. Up to you. No, it's okay. All right. Okay, so then, secondly. Um, we use superlatives to compare one thing to a lot of things. So for one syllable adjective, we have the and then the adjective plus est. And of course, you duplicate final consonant in some cases. So big becomes the biggest, cheap, the cheapest, loud, the loudest, hot, the hottest, and then good. Uh, you know, becomes irregular now. So the best, bad, the worst. Now, for two syllable words ending in y, we also have the, uh, have the <coughs> the article. So pretty becomes the prettiest. So y is replaced by i, and you add est. Dirty, the dirtiest. Silly, the silliest. And then for two or more syllable adjectives not ending in y. The construction would be uh, pretty much the most, and then the adjective, which is unchanged. So the most useful, the most interesting, and the most complicated. So that's that for now, for the grammar. Yes. Uh, are you happy with that? Yes. Any questions? Sure. No, no questions. Okay. Well, let's get into the article quickly. Hopefully, I can finish it in time. Yeah. I'm going to give you the link. Here's the link. And we have another student, Claudio. Claudio, welcome to class. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, hello, hello. Hello, Welling. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was in correct my sound and my microphone. Sorry. Hello, oh, my name is Claudio. I'm from Brazil. Nice to see you. Finally, I have another Brazilian. I haven't had Brazilians in my class for a long time. And yes, which yes, part Brazilian. 
Are you from uh, which part of Brazil are you from? And I'm from Rio. I live in Rio de Janeiro. Ah, nice, nice. Awesome. Well, nice to see you. Nice to have you with us. And this is the first time I think I have you in my class. Right? We haven't. Yes. Yes. Yes, I have been studying by Colingo, but it's my first time in your class. I think it's the time difference. I never usually taught at this time, so now I think I'll have the opportunity to meet, to meet more Brazilians, hopefully. And uh, like uh, Murad, he's from Mexico, so there's a similar time uh, difference there between Brazil and Mexico. So, um, Claudio, just to brief you quickly, uh, sports and hobbies is our topic, okay? And the grammar which we are covering um, is comparatives and superlatives. Okay, we just went through the grammar. Well, I'm going to ask you a few questions after I read the article. Hopefully we can uh, have a nice discussion. Okay, so uh, okay. the link... The link of the article is in the Colingo chat. If you want to open it up, and you can, uh, you know, look, uh, re I mean, follow in your own window. I'm gonna make it larger here in the screen sharing window as well. Okay, I so here we go. Open. Excellent, beautiful. So golf. Let's see how interesting golf is. Hmm. Uh, okay, it's one of the most popular outdoor sports in the world. It is played on a golf course. And uh, players try to hit a golf ball into a small hole with as few strokes as possible. Millions of men and women around the world play golf for fun. Thousands play tournaments and millions around the world watch golf on TV. Who's played golf out of you three guys? Abdullahi, you came back. Welcome back. Yes, back. Uh, we had uh, a power failure. Oh, no. Is everything okay? Mm, no, I say uh, the first time when uh, my connection shut down, it was because uh, we had uh, have oh, we failure. had um, yes we had uh, had a failure. Power outage. You can say power outage. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. So the power is back up. That's good. Yes. Now the the power is back. Yes. Awesome. Okay, well, welcome back. We just started the article. So I asked okay. you guys, have you played Have you played golf before? Anyone played golf before? I know Murad likes golf more than football. Um, I've never played golf. Okay, Murad, you must have played golf. No, never. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay, Abdullahi? Because no, I didn't never have a chance to play. <laughs> I was a, I was a little kid at that yes. time. Ah, I see. Yeah, I've never really played on a big course. I have played mini golf and sort of on the park in the park, but not on a proper proper golf course. I haven't. So let's see what they say. How interesting really uh, is it? Um, so, golf courses have different sizes and shapes. Most of them have 18 holes that are between 100 and 500 meters long. If you have finished playing all 18 holes, you, you have played a round of golf. Each hole has a starting place called a tee. This is a small area from which the golfer takes the first stroke or drive. The grass between the tee and the green is called the fairway. Sometimes fairways can be very long and, and golf players need a few strokes to get to the green. The land on the left and right of the fairway is, is the rough. It is made up of tall, tree, uh, tall grass, bushes and trees. The green is the round area at the end of the fairway. It has special grass that is very short. In the middle of the green is a hole. It has a flag placed, placed in it so that golfers can see where it is. Almost all golf courses have hazards. These are small lakes, sandy areas, and bunkers. They make it more difficult for players to hit the ball. So this is an, an image of a golf course. So we start off, start off at number one, and then we make our way 
until the green, I guess. Yes. Yeah, eight is green. Okay. So, equipment. A golfer needs a ball and a set of golf clubs to play golf. A golf ball is made of rubber and has a plastic covering. It weighs about 1.62 ounces or 46 grams. Golf clubs. Uh, okay, in a tournament, golf players can use up to 14 different types of golf clubs. Each club is used to play the ball in a different situation. Generally, there are two basic uh, categories of clubs, woods and irons. They are numbered from 1 to 9. Woods were originally clubs that had a wooden head. Today, they have heads made of steel at, or titanium. Golfers use woods to hit the ball over long distances. A number, a number one wood is also called a driver. Players use this club to start their game at T. Irons have heads that are thinner and flatter. Instead of iron, the club has a head made of steel or another metal. Irons are used for shorter shots and uh, and shots what and shots where you must play the ball very accurately. The putter is a club that is used on the green for very short distances. Right, so we have three clubs here. The left one is wooden, the middle one, the flat one is a putter, and then we have the iron on the right. So, rules of the game. The rules of a golf game are very simple. Starting from the tee, a golfer must hit the ball towards the hole. You must not touch or move it. It must be played from wherever it lands. If the ball lands in one of the hazards, the golf player may take it out or use a new ball, but then gets an extra stroke as a penalty. So, scoring and handicaps. In order to see how well you, uh, you are doing every hole on a golf course, uh, okay, uh, there has there's a there's a standard score known as par. There's some grammatical discrepancy here. So par is the number of strokes it would take a very good golfer to hit the ball into the hole. There are three, four, and five under par holes. Is it under or par holes? Anyways, golfers have special names for the number of strokes they need compared. Par. So eagle means two strokes under par, birdie one stroke under par, and boogie or bogey I think is what they call it, uh, one stroke over par. So in a few cases a golfer may hit the ball into the hole from the teeing ground. This is called a hole in one. So if you finish a round of golf on par, you can think of yourself as a very good player. The handicap system allows weaker and better players to compete with each other. Based on a very complicated formula, a weaker player is allowed more strokes to finish the round. Golf can be played in two ways. In match play, uh, the player uh, who hits the ball with uh, fewer number of strokes win, wins that hole. The player who wins the most holes wins. Stroke or medal play is more common. In this competition, the player with the fewest number of strokes for the hole, 18 hole round wins. Okay, and now the history of golf. That's nice. Although the Romans may have played golf with a bent stick and a ball filled with feathers, golf, as we know it today, <clears throat> started in Scotland in the 14th century. Uh, St. Andrews is called the birthplace of golf because its golf course is over 500 years old. The first rules of the game were also set there. And this is the place, the Royal St. Andrews Golf Club. Okay, this is the last bit. So, 
Golf spread from the British Isles uh, to the overseas colonies. The oldest golf club outside of Britain was founded, founded in Calcutta, India. Golf came to the USA and Canada towards the end of the 19th century. Although British golfers dominated the sport at first, great American golfers emerged at the beginning of the 20th century. <clears throat> in 1916, they formed a professional organization, the PGA, in which they started to earn money through golf. Players like uh, Severiano Balestores of Spain, Bernhard Langer of Germany, and Gary Player of South Africa made golf popular in Europe and other continents. In the last two decades, the American Tiger Woods was, uh, has dominated the game. In the 1960s, more and more companies, private sponsors, and television networks started to pour money into golf. Today, the best golfers in the world earn millions of dollars in prize money every year. Tiger Woods became the first athlete to become a billionaire. Well, there you go, uh, Murad. <laughs> He's a billionaire as well. By the way, it's Felipe. Welcome, Felipe. How are you? I'm fine, nice thank you. you. Nice to see you. Welcome to class. I've just basically read the article, uh, and it's about golf. So we have a insight, an insight on, on golf. And uh, I didn't know actually that Tiger Woods uh, was a billionaire. It's a lot of money he made. Anyways, so Felipe, where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Brazil as well. Nice. Which part of Brazil? Uh, Rio de Janeiro. Rio, lovely, Rio de Janeiro. Okay, that's good. I just had another Brazilian also from Rio de Janeiro, but he left. I don't know what happened. Uh, so anyways, any questions so far? Murad, any vocabulary questions? or? If you scroll to the bottom, uh, after you've opened the link, uh, there's a lot of you know, vocabulary words with their meanings. Okay. Okay. So, if there are no questions, um, I have one. I, uh, there is uh, okay. the word. There is the word poor. Uh, it says it means invest. Uh, poor. Yes. All oh, right. Uh, I have seen. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Being used yes, for. Yes, yes. Uh, like making coffee or something related to this. That mm -hmm. it has different. In meaning. this, uh, yeah, I think the the actual uh, definition is not that accurate. Basically, it's referring to the money. So you know, when you pour something, um, when you're pouring something, for example, you're pouring mil milk or you're pouring water into a cup, right? You're gonna pour milk in here. Right, so you're pouring it into it. Okay. So in this case, yeah. they're saying pouring money into golf. So putting or investing. Right. right? They're saying investing. Okay. So it makes when you talk about money, you're pouring money into something. It means investment. So you're investing it. Great. Okay. okay. Any other words? It's a metaphor. Yes. Yeah, like a me metaphor. Yes. Yeah, similar to that, yeah. So they could have easily said started to invest money into golf, but they they thought poor money is more like you know um, it's a different sort of uh, way of explaining it, you know, different outlook. So okay, let me ask you guys some questions then, and hopefully we can use our lovely grammar of comparatives and superlatives. Um, okay, it doesn't have to be related to this article. So this, some of these questions are not necessarily related to the article. But I'd like you to try and use the, you know, the grammar skill that we just covered. 
Uh, by the way, um, Philippe, we're talking about superlatives, uh, sorry, comparatives and superlatives, so big, bigger, biggest, yeah, and so on. So question is, which do you like more, baseball or hockey? Uh, can I go after, <laughs> just to see? Yes. Sorry, Felipe. Can I go later just to see how it works? Yeah, sure, sure. So, Murad, how would you answer? My answer uh, to this question? Yeah, if you had to choose, which one would you like more? Well, in this case, I don't know because I, I love golf. Golf and tennis are the best. Nice. That's a good and answer. You know why? Because they are clean. Injury Please. free. Yes, yes. Imagine how no many soccer players have been injured. Mm. I know. It's injury free. Absolutely. I was going to yes. say that. They're not injured. Well, there's risk of back back injuries and joint injuries, maybe or shoulder injuries. You know, your knee, your knees or your shoulders from all the swinging you do. But it's not as severe as football. Let's say you know you can break your legs. You know that. You just have to be careful. While you just in have soccer, to be careful. for example, even if you are careful, others might not be careful. They mm. can injure you. Exactly. While you're yeah. playing. That's why I like golf and tennis. Lovely. So back to your answer. I liked it because you used a superlative and you used I like golf the best. Yeah. Right? Perfect. So Felipe, how would you answer? Do you like which one do you like more, baseball or hockey? Or if you don't like either, you can say you like something else. So uh, you say baseball or hockey? Mm. Um I've, I've never played, never seen closer any of those uh, because mm -hmm. they're not any common here in Brazil. But I find hockey to be more more awesome. More, more awesome. Ah, nice. <laughs> I can say awesome more now. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, 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 of course you can, yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Uh, good answer. I like it. I mean, I haven't really played. Oh well, I have kind of uh, tried when I was in Germany, but so hockey, not not the ice hockey. I'm not talking about ice hockey. You know, we're talking about hockey. It's it looks like a football pitch. You know, like a football field, and they're all they're wearing. Uh, they have these wooden sticks and a round ball. It looks like a like a cricket ball or like a um, a, maybe a white tennis ball, but it's quite hard. And they are pushing the ball on the grass. It's usually fake grass, like turf. And it's they have like, goals. It's like the ice, but in the grass. Yes, yes. And they, they, they wear normal jerseys, you know. There's no helmets or anything. They might wear mouth guard to protect their teeth. And they wear uh, shin guards or shin pads to protect their shin bone. That's it's called it, yeah. Field hockey. Or field hockey is another name, yeah. yeah field hockey. Excellent. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, I'll ask you another quick question because we're running, running out of time. I'm going to have to quickly assess you briefly. So, who is your favorite sports player and why? So, it can be with any sport, it doesn't have to be golf. I know Murad, uh, but. Um, Tiger Woods isn't your favorite since you're a mom. Right? So, do you have any favorite sports player? Well, I. Soccer? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just oh. want to add something. When it comes to soccer or football, I used to like Pele, the Brazilian player. And for me, he. He's been the best player ever. Mm. 
Yeah, I never had the opportunity to watch him play, <clears throat> but I've, I mean, I've seen some of the, the video footage when he was playing, and yeah, I have to say he was amazing. So the way answer. he dribbles. Yes. Do you think that today's uh, technical players are as good as Pele, or even better? Like Messi or maybe they are they've become more developed mm. because soccer is being developed day by day absolutely it's, i think more physical perhaps yeah right Sorry, what word do then, you use it uh, soccer has been developed i developed it okay yeah it's more developed, definitely. So what do you, that's a good answer. I like it. You use quite a few uh, comparatives or superlatives there. Uh, so, Felipe, what about yourself? Who's your favorite sports player? Well, I, I don't have a favorite sport player, but, but uh, on Pelé, uh, he was indeed a good player, but her, uh, recently, when there was, I don't know if you were aware, here in Brazil, it has been six months, uh, the great uh, movement around the outer country. And Pelé was... Because of the World Cup. Because of the World Cup. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. because of the World Cup, the uh, bus prices and a lot of things. And Pelé uh, was uh, one that spoke... Um, on behalf of the media, I mean, he was defending the media and the government, and, and was against all these movements. So uh, he loses uh, a lot of fans. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So he was basically, yeah, of course, because I think he's a member of FIFA or he has some position in FIFA. Yeah, doesn't yes. he? So of course he has to stand up for FIFA, and you know, it's his job. So not many fans would have liked that, especially in Brazil, which is sad. Yeah, it's sad. Um, unfortunate. Uh, but that's more politics, so let's not get into politics now. Yeah. But excellent. Yeah, that's good. So uh, look, we're coming actually over the time now. So I'll quickly um, give you a, a sentence or a quick assessment each. So I'll give you a word. And or an adjective, right? And I want you to make give me the comparative and the superlative, and give me a sentence also using either. So let's start with uh, Murat. Uh, your adjective is interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> So what's the comparative and what's the superlative? Music is more interesting than dancing. Okay, nice. That's good. So you've given me a sentence already. That's good. And what's the superlative? So interesting, more interesting. Well, could you hear me? Oh, sorry, I was muted. All oh, right, now, so what's the? <laughs> I didn't hear you. Yes. Do you mean so, the superlative? Yeah, of interesting. Okay. Science is the most interesting subject at Excellent. school. Perfect. Thank you very much. That's good. No corrections at all. And uh, Felipe. Is it Felipe or Felipe? Felipe. Like Felipe Massa, eh? Felipe, yes. Like the Formula One racing driver, Felipe Massa, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, and yours is. Bad. Okay. Um, it. I'm wondering if it's bad here or more bad, but neither sound 
uh, make sense for me. Mm, yeah, you're right. They don't make sense. <laughs> so what do you think? What's our worst? Uh, uh, yes. So what's a comparative? So we have bad. What comes after bad? Worst. Right. Worst. Worst is the third one. That's that's a superlative. Yeah. Okay. Worst. And what's the comparative? It's similar to the last one. It's similar to the one you just said. It's similar to worst. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds almost the same. Worst. Worst. Yeah, just without the T. Yeah, worse. Okay, so two sentences. Yeah. Yeah, two sentences, please. Um, I think um, baseball is worse than soccer. Uh, yes, nice, good. And and the superlative now. The worst thing Pele could say he had said. Just can I say? It? Yes, said again. Sorry, I didn't uh, catch it. I'm I'm going to make you a chart. Uh, Pele said the worst thing he could ever say. He could ever have said. Okay, he could ever have have said. Perfect. Very nice. I'm happy. That's a good sentence, yeah. So Pele said the worst thing he could ever have said. Okay. Or he could have said. Fine. I didn't know about that. Me neither. <laughs> I I'm surprised. See, you know, this is why uh, I'm sure FIFA doesn't want that to spread outside of Brazil, you know, yeah. which is a qu quite a controversial um, you know, thing about Pele. Because he's got so many followers, and I'm sure that he told FIFA, "Look, make sure this doesn't get outside of South America or you know Brazil." Yeah. Um, yeah, but I learned something there. There you go. And this happened like six months ago, yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay, guys. Well, look, that's it. We've come to the end. Um, thank you very much for joining the class. Nice to meet you, Felipe. Hope to nice see to you again soon. Um, if there's no other question you want to ask me, then um, have a great night, great evening, great thank afternoon, you. and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care, guys.